Hello Tubes. I've been a cancelled progressive since 2016, when it became clear that I think intersectionality is postmodern cack and black people can be racist. I'm persona non grata amongst the woke. Nevertheless, the DNA of my social emotions has predestined my political life to be one of anger at injustice rather than fear of death. My metamorphosizing into a red-pilled anti-SJW is thus but a blank slate social constructivist fantasy. My democratic socialist genes will out. I'm essentially a corrupt lefty, and there's nothing to be done. I'm lost in leftness, caught in a trap. No turning back. And yet the reasonable ambitions of many of my fellow progressives to improve economic justice and remove communal injustice are presently only fit to play out as a tragedy. Why? Well, it's down to the current dominance of left identarians who've abandoned liberal values in the Enlightenment rather than the Reagan-Bush 84 sense of the word and who've turned their backs on scientific truth like the trans activists who so readily murmurate into Twitter mobs, doxer squads and green-inked employer botherers to descend without mercy upon all who dare question their anti-science bollocks about female testicles. With regards to the latter of these voices, the epistemic anti-naturalism, my conviction is that if our policies are to be enacted and not merely lamented as forlorn hopes, the explanatory component of progressive ideology has to re-embrace its respect for truth, in particular that respect for empirical scientific truth that was discarded during the emergence of the new left some half-century since. Given that the identarian left of the current year is in many ways still the new left of 1968, intense resistance to the naturalisation of social science is commonplace, ranging from practical objections, like concerns about scientism, the non-universal nature of social laws, or the irreducible complexity of social systems, to radical complaints, like the interpretive nature of social understanding, the need for critical theory to cleanse social explanation of sin, or the postmodern indeterminacy of social categories. In my next few videos, I want to dig into the charge of scientism, before going on in further videos to discuss the other anti-naturalist objections, practical and radical, I think there are useful naturalistic answers to all these objections, answers which restore the naturalisation of the social sciences to a live and reasonable option, and in doing so, restore the prospects for progressive power by helping make the left fit for power rather than ridicule. I want to make a start on scientism, although, to be frank, I fucking hate the word. More often than not, it's just a rhetorical ejaculation seeking to preserve mind feels from nature reels, a kind of reality repellent. Want to believe in a supreme creator deity? Explanatory adequacy of evolution by natural selection making it difficult? Well, that's just scientism. Want to believe there's no such thing as biological sex? Pesky sex research, a bit of an obstacle? Well, that's just scientism. In most cases, scientism is the alarm call of the all too frequently spotted anti-science pecker whose faith nest is under threat. Scientism may thus be discarded as rhetorical smoke, at least most of the time. There are, however, genuine concerns about the fetishization of natural science. As a philosopher, I have lived experience of such fetishization. We all do, as a kind of oppressed class. Sam Harris, for example, went so far as to write his infamous 2011 shit book about morals. It was an absolute embarrassment precisely because it failed to investigate what philosophers, including some he may have found useful, like Hume, had said about meta-ethics and normativity the very things that Harris in his scientific arrogance thought of as only contributing to the boredom in the world, thereby cag-handedly nerfing naturalised meta-ethics for the best part of a decade. Around that time, other new atheists, who were so in love with the science as to have eyes for little else, also shut the bed with their ill-considered pronouncements on the death, irrelevance or otherwise airy fairiness of philosophy, due in main to its having the temerity not to be 
physics, evolutionary biology, or whatever field the pontificating science lab in question happened to specialise. As a naturalistic philosopher, I still feel this was no way to treat your best friend. And yet, this episode also served, along with the analytically retarded definition of atheism as a lack of belief, as the crack in the skin that let the SJW infection in. And so all these figures have since, when you consider what's happened to them, paid the price of their folly. As have we all. As have we all. Anyway, in my next video I want to deal with the legitimate complaints that sometimes fall under the label of scientism, of which I think both Hack and Pellucci speak informatively, although I disagree with Pellucci somewhat more than I do with Hack. To distinguish these legitimate concerns from the fields preservation rhetoric, I shall identify them using the entirely non-clickbait label fascistic science, thereby sorting the title of my next video. So until then, thank you for listening.